Hi, it's Colleen Schmidt again, and I'm here with our second increment of eight asteroids to add to our hopefully ever-growing list of asteroids. As always, I always want to begin by stating where my work comes from. Um, obviously, I've been doing this work for a long time, so some of it's my own, but uh, I also am using uh, a book called The Mechanics as a matter of fact, I have it right here. It's called Mechanics of the Future. Okay, it's written by my teacher, Martha Lang Westcott. And the keywords that we're going to be using for the asteroids, and so far with every video that I've done, has come from this particular book um, as at least the leeway into. Okay, um, also, if you would like any more information on the asteroids, uh, you can check out my website divinationcounselingservice.org or you can visit my teacher's website marthalangwestcott.com so again if you're a working astrologer this is a great way to enhance the detail of your work and not only blow the minds of your client but it's going to blow your mind as well the accuracy is unreal so with that said today's second list begins with Apollo. Apollo is a representation of the slow learner. Okay, as a basic, basic way we can put that. Um, when you think of the slow learner, you think about how in certain areas of your life you feel stuck. You feel um, uh, where you just, you, like the problems keep repeating. Okay, it's like, why? I'm here again? Like, what happened? So, Apollo is the slow learner, and in the glyphs, which are listed on the divinationcounselingservice.org website, um, the glyph is a circle with a hat on it, okay? Um, the astraea, which is our next one, represents eyes, really, I mean, in simple terms, but it's also that unending, never resolved, uh, those areas of our life where things, you know, are either never over or it's really difficult to find closure. So with that said, um, it's also, Astraea is also associated not just with eyes, but what is witness and what is seen. And sometimes uh, we want to think about that in terms of particularly what we've witnessed in life, because oftentimes that is in part what makes us who we are. The glyph is a percentage sign. Okay, so that's pretty easy. Circe, as if I'm pronouncing it correctly, uh, is the desire to help. It's also how we deal with help. It's how we are supportive, but also how we deal with those who are supportive of us. Um, the support can also represent that time when like, people come in to help you at the 11th hour, or when you're there for somebody and you know it's their 11th hour. So it's also associated with that. It's the letter, a capital letter C with two lines running through it, almost like a musical clef, okay? Um, the next one I wanna move into is Hil Hidago, okay, Hidago, if I'm saying that correctly. And it, it's, it's, they call it the modification of information or a filtering system, but you know, it, it's also those times when you really don't know if you should speak out or not. If I speak up, will it work? If I don't speak up, well, what will happen? So it's that, it is that set of, you know, will, will I or won't I or should I or shouldn't I when it comes to standing up maybe for your own convictions. Hildako. The glyph is, uh, to me, an upside down question mark with a hat on it. Okay, again, the glyphs can be found at the website. Isis uh, it represents pieces, okay? So it's the ability to take something that's scattered and then put it together. Um, scattered pieces could also represent things like if you had, say, an Isis Cirrus, then that's finger foods, okay? So, you know, it, it, you can play it out so literally with these asteroids. Actually, that's the most fun. Um, but it's scattered pieces and then that need to pull it all together to help those pieces come together. Um, the glyph is, a, to, again, a capital letter I, and then it has a circle running through it from top to bottom, okay? Um, the next one, 
that I'm going to stay with uh, for today is Cassandra. And Cassandra is that ability to give or follow advice. Okay, uh, Cassandra is about advising others and being advised, but it's also about hearing. So again, it could be affiliated with your ears. But it's that sense of listening. Are you really hearing what is being said? When you speak, are people really listening to you? Do you, do you always uh, really adhere to what others are saying? You know, all of that comes under the guise of Cassandra. Um, remember that in Cassandra, she really wasn't believed. So there is that a little bit of, uh, are you, are, are, are the, is it getting across? Okay. Here, the glyph looks like, and this is according to my teacher, because for these last couple, I actually used her descriptions uh, because I felt they were better than my own. Um, in this case, she refers to the fact that because it's associated with your ears, it's like, um, as she puts it here, a hand cupping an ear with the receptivity outside. So you're gathering the information. You're listening for the information. Um, the Lilith, which is our next one, is reg regarding decisions. You know, you see Lilith being in somebody's chart, you know they're making some decisions because it's about a selection rejection process as well. Depending on where it falls in the chart, it can also relate to triangles and competitions because it is about that whole idea of selection and rejection, but it's also gender issues and gender matters and matters of gender and and that selection rejection sometimes is directly affiliated to whether one is a male or a female so that's where Lilith comes in I'm gonna just for a minute here I don't like taking too long on on these videos I really like keeping to the keywords but Lilith is is really near and dear to my heart as an asteroid um, be, because Lilith uh, rejected Adam. She's technically the first wife of Adam, okay? Unlike Eve, who is technically the second wife and is actually is more from him, um, the, Lilith is not. She's completely equal to him. Now, as a result of all of that history and the fact that she refused to be on the bottom, take that every way you can, okay? Um, she, divorced Ad, um, she divorced Adam. Okay, so that's why he was left by himself. So she left and apparently took her children with her. And now the Jews in particular demonize her. The Christians have totally cut her out of the Bible, though I do suspect that if we were to read the Dead Sea Scrolls, it probably is in there. Because um, I'm sure that's where the story uh, has been devised from. Although it doesn't have to be because she's been a part of the Jewish tradition for a very long time. They just demonize her. Okay, but realize that's what she means, okay? And so I, I love that asteroid. I'll just love that asteroid. Now, moving on to our final one for today, it's Niobe. And, you know, Niobe is really interesting because people, you know, it's associated with like pride in your children or pride in your fertility. Um, but the glyph says it all. It's a circle inside a teardrop, okay? It's the fall of the pride, the perils of the pride is what I wrote. Um, but it is, it is about that, the lessons that we learn by being too associated with our pride, um, you know, our ego. You're too associated with your ego sometimes. This is when, what they say, fall cometh. You know, it's before the, so it, you, you're, you're going to, you're obviously, if you set yourself up, there's going to be a fall. And um, Niobe will kind of show you where that is in your life. Um, it can represent children, but let's face it, there's a lot of people that don't have children. So it does represent pride. What are the things that you're very pride, proud of? You know, to an artist, it could be their works of art. You know, so here we go with, um, you know, how tied in is Niobe to one's pride? Mm, I'd say probably, uh, I'm sorry, to one's ego. How, how much is Niobe a part of one's ego? I think that's probably... A huge part of the ego. So just again, it's the pride, it's the fall of the pride. And the glyph um, is a circle, um, which according to Martha, my teacher, represents the circle of pride inside a teardrop. I do believe that says it all. And with that, I hope to see you next time.
Take care. Have a great day.